So what's happening right now to me is that people are taking my videos. You're a Genshin Impact cop. Do you know how disgusting that is? Clipping them out of context. You know what you and Adolf Hitler said? I can't make that argument because I have a fucking brain. Translating them incorrectly. Being how much that doesn't hurt mean that I hate four hours. I never that did. That benefits them more. Not capturing the sarcasm. And then they go, how the fuck did you like? And the majority of things I do are just And the nuances of my speech pattern. Oh, dude, you call God, you cry over. Amber, it's because she is a business perspective. And now I'm being posted on Billy Billy as a arrogant. They shit they out of because I can't keep my mouth shut. shut. Loud mouthed dipshit. I did it before I hate you. Because I like there's just been so much drama in the Genshin really Impact community. Nice. It's just fucking unnecessary. When it comes to content creation, there's a multitude of different ways to present an idea or an opinion. Whether or not it will be accepted by the wider audience is up for debate, as day in and day out thousands of hours of content is uploaded to YouTube spanning widely different topics. In the more niche creator spaces, you might find drama over things that generally do not make sense to get upset over. Others have more viable drama that ends up having real consequence. For a certain gacha gaming creator, this is no exception. However, the severity of the drama he faced and the subsequent backlash over his tenure making videos on gacha games is interesting. With the time it spans and the intricacies of his drama and outcomes, it only stands to reason that one should go deep. However, with there being several dramas over several years, finding all the information can be difficult as a lot of it has been removed for one reason or another. Here, we're going to condense it all to the best of my ability. There's a saying that goes along the lines of, if you want to know somebody, walk a mile in their shoes. John Robertson, who we will now on refer to as his online alias, Tectone, was born in the USA on December 23rd of 1993. Growing up, his childhood was fraught with family drama. In the years leading up to his adulthood, there were many aspirations that Tectone had, from being a professional wrestler to acting in general. For anybody who doesn't know, I have a passion for acting, okay? I did professional wrestling for a while until I got injured, and then I went to performance arts uh, in college, studied that for about two years, and then I did the professional play, a big passion of mine, until I took a uh, interactive media and graphic design course in which I realized, hey, YouTube, I can do this. However, his career steered into making content shortly after taking courses on interactive media. While this is an insanely abridged version of his story, his history before the very first video he made can be summarized as he was born, grew up in a military household with several siblings, did not get along well with all of them, eventually he moved out, somewhere in there he began playing gacha games that led him down this path. Tectone's first video was of a mobile game known as Summoner's War, where he immediately we can see his desire for improvements on a game that he clearly had a passion for. Going. Uh, and I, I feel like some of the ideas I have for the game could be pretty easily implemented and also very beneficial for the community and also you know while games such as summer's war brought him to homelessness due to the predatory practices of the game's pay to win elements for pvp the main focus of the game tectone bounced back and moved forward his most well-known drama that started was in arknights but there is a lesser known one that he was a part of in a game called skylanders so i went to this new game and it was called skylanders ring of heroes and now here's the important thing. This is the only game in my entire channel that you cannot find me make any videos for, even though I made videos for that game for over half a year. In Skylanders, a clan was exploiting a massive bug to defeat a difficult challenge to gain rewards leagues ahead of everyone else. Nobody else knew the glitch until one of my mods, and his name is Mateo, told me about their bug exploit. When Mateo stabbed Epic in the back and told me how they were doing it, I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Tectone, having his suspicions come true in the form of whistleblower within said clan, brought it to the attention of the community manager. After a quick investigation lasting only two weeks, the clan in question was summarily banned and disbanded. However, the backlash of Tectone voicing against their exploit initially caused this clan to harass and false report Tectone. She saw all these people trying to get me banned and she reached out to me personally. And she said, Tectone, this can't be true. You aren't exploiting bugs, are you? Why are we getting so many mass reports of you exploiting bugs? The hatred was shifted to the community manager that led to her eventual firing. 
They stopped going after May and they went after her instead. And unfortunately, she lost her job because with that many people complaining about your CM, the company was forced to move their hand. The history of this drama is short and uneventful, but the actual start of its controversies. From one game to the next, Tectone eventually made his way into the first documented drama that still follows him today. Arknights. In a game surrounded by PvE instead of PvP, you might find it out of place to find anyone fighting over anything. However, the spat arose between Tectone and another content creator known as Dreamy. Dreamy arose when Tectone came with the opinion that a character, Province, was not as good as displayed, since every showcase had several supports buffing her damage. While a valid criticism of the showcase, Dreamy disagreed and felt the need to debunk the claims that Province was bad. This showcase places said character against a boss, dropping a fifth of their HP and pitting them against the speed of another character with buffers to showcase the comparison. Regardless of the outcome, Tectone was still in disagreement. You can make any unit in the game look fucking crazy if you pair them with every buffer in the game. Okay? Let's see what Chen is going to do in order to assist this problem. Oh! Hit him for, you know, about, what, five, six thousand damage right there? But instead, in a time scenario, we're just gonna go ahead and take away Province's only downside, and that is dealing with units that are above 80%. Ultimately, this was just two opinions on what is effective and what isn't. What are we proving here? Because in my opinion, did this video not just prove my exact fucking point? Any unit can be a fucking boss killer if you pair them with every unit in the fucking game. It turned into a war between communities of content creators under the same game, small but the fire stoked by a mere disagreement. However, unsurprisingly, the entire drama quelled when the two concluded their disagreements, ending with even the direct promotion of Dreamy's channel and a thank you from Dreamy. We have Province's savior, Dreamy. Now a lot of y'all know Dream and I had a disagreement about three or four months ago about how I think Province is dog shit, but she loves Province. And people thought that Dreamy and I had beef over this shit. It's like, dog, you, you understand that two people on the internet can have a disagreement about a fucking unit in a video game. To this day, people believe this specific instance of drama to be irrefutable proof of Tectone's future behavior. A disagreement on an overpriced tower defense mobile game made to fish dollars from the wallets of the weak willed. In the end, nobody talks about Province anymore, and still raves about Tectone's incorrigible behavior. From here, Tectone managed to remain drama-free for quite some time, until a certain breath came from the wilds, riding the tailwinds of a success linked to its own. I'm not going to go into the details of what Genshin Impact is, it's pretty obvious what it is, it's another gacha game, but it was probably, and probably will remain to be, the most popular gacha game in the space. This drama surrounds a certain content creator by the name of Enviosity. Enviosity is a free-to-play Genshin Impact streamer, and holds the title with pride. Tectone, to many people's knowledge, is the complete opposite. A term coined by the industry as a terminology to quantify large spenders, now fondly used as both insult and ego-stroking, whale. There's plenty of little things that happened between Enviosity and Tectone. Ultimately, their personalities clashed, and Tectone was told that he was in the wrong by another creator by the name of Atsu. MVP was happening, and I was like, I'm sure I can fix this. I'm sure I can help mediate this, and I thought I did. A creator that we will go into more detail on later. Drama stemming from situations such as Tectone offering Envy a reward for completing Spiral Abyss as an incentive, where Envy was furious towards Tectone on stream about it, to a situation where Tectone offhandedly said, nah bro, fuck anybody who likes Hollow Knight, shit game, coincidentally, while Envy was playing it. But so did Tectone at one point, so fuck Tectone too. GET OFF ME! Ah! To Tectone's community telling Envy to pull for Rosario on stream, causing him to have a mental breakdown. Yeah, my heart can't take any more chat. I'm at I'm, my heart rate. I, I can't. I can't. My heart rate's at 151. Two for fuck's sake. I can't take any more of this shit. I know you guys keep fucking pressuring me and telling me Envy keep going. 
please. Keep fucking going. Go, get rid of Aria. And there's gonna be some fucking toxic people later today. They're gonna be all like, oh, imagine tuning in to watch Envy and he didn't get Rosaria. Imagine how fucked up that is. Well, welcome here. We'll get Rosaria for you. You know, toxic people fucking saying shit, whatever. Chat, I just can't. I can't. I can't. While there is no direct proof that any of the people in chat that were part of this stream were from Tectone Stream, it's not unlikely. There are more occasions, but it's difficult to find any evidence or video of it happening, but you get the idea. This drama caused Tectone's community and Envy's to clash, on top of both creators themselves. Enviosity stresses getting to his head, blaming Tectone as the source, and even causing Asian guy's streams to intervene. This intervention by Atsu made Tectone to be the villain in this drama, pushing him to seek help which led him to the interview with Healthy Gamer GG, also known as Dr. K. A detail we will get into later. Eventually, Tectone ends up apologizing to Enviosity directly. Zero negative feelings towards you, whatsoever. And I am genuinely sorry that this had to happen to us. And I also am sorry for letting misconception after misconception get in my head and pretty much ruin your reputation for me, at least temporary. That went away a little bit ago, but even though it was temporary, I'm sorry that ever happened. And once again, I'm not asking for your forgiveness, but I do want to let you know that in, in my eyes that you're, you're great. And I apologize if this should happen. Deadass. The end result was Envy actually coming on to Tectone's game show anyway, and doing so well to even win against the other creators. It seemed as if the whole anxiety fueled drama had reached its conclusion, and the two would be okay in the same gaming community. Envy is our winner, making it to question 22, the first ever Genshin Guesser Champion. My God! Envy, how are you feeling, homie? Still hungry. But Tectone, being Tectone, had to jokingly make a remark about Envy, and it dissolved fairly quickly after. Tectone opened his mouth again. A Reddit post from three years ago seems to go into further detail. However, some of the clips and some of the videos regarding this drama are sparse and few and far between, so any information that could be for this is mostly lost. While the drama with Envy ended here, and both creators basically staying away from one another, the next one came rather quickly. We all collectively know the outcome of this one. Zhongli, and subsequently Geo, got a massive buff overall, making him one of the top Spiral Abyss usages to date and the best comfort pick for any user in the game. However, before the changes went in, there was an opinion. This opinion was opposite of the verbal masses. Tectone, one of the biggest content creators for Genshin at the time, toted the counterculture opinion that Zhongli was fine on release. A bit more healing. That is literally it. He is one of the best C05 stars, in my opinion, in the whole goddamn game. I'm going to take a hard stance right now. If you are running Zhongli as your main damage dealer, congrats. You can do whatever you want. Another content creator, a duo actually, sharing the channel by the name Jinjinx and Tuner, went on to make a video about the frame data and power level of Zhongli compared to the other 5 star units at the time, and deemed him underwhelming overall. With the extensive testing that Jinjinx and Tuner did on the strength of Zhongli, the community dubbed it as the irrefutable proof on why Zhongli needed the buff, or any, in the first place. Tectone's community, knowing Tectone's obnoxious behavior, pushed Tectone into looking at Jinjinx and Tuner's video on Zhongli. This led to Tectone talking with Tuner, a Genshin player who was a little late to the start of the game, but not bad by any stretch. And I would also say the casual community probably makes up for more than 90% of the community. I feel like the hardcore is the Oh, no, only. I wouldn't say that um, in any, any game, the casual community yeah. will make up a super majority of any game. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, I have to yeah. assume the kind of people that are interested in looking up videos are maybe a little bit more geared towards that more competitive because they're learning on bettering themselves, but... Yeah, I agree. The conversation they had was rather civil, and even though Tectone admits he had dubious intentions initially, he failed to follow through with them and just had a straight conversation with Tuner. If there's one thing I want your chat to take away, um, is that... Just don't don't harass anybody, right? Because like everybody's True. truth is their own truth. You know, you have different resources and availabilities to me. You might have had a set on day one. You might have had like the perfect set to make him broken on day one. We didn't have those sets. So our initial impression was that maybe he was weak, but you you had your HPs because you said you're keeping your HP scaling. You're like, holy shit. Yeah, dude, just throw HP on this guy. Let's do it. And there you go, mm -hmm. you know?
from the perspective of a whale to a non-whale, all about Zhang Li's capabilities. Tuner spoke plainly and respectfully to Tectone, and in kind, so did Tectone to Tuner. It was rather constructive, and the stream held no ill will once all was said and done. It seemed as if the entirety of the situation was overblown and taken to the worst. I really want to say, yeah, sure. hold on, I really want to say, uh, assuming you're listening right now, um, I really do appreciate what? that you took the time to want to talk instead of, of just talk shit. Of course! Um, it really know, means bitch. a lot to me to know that yeah. there are other content creators and other people who care to have a conversation. However, a comment left on the upload of Tuner and Tectone's discussion was read by Tectone, and his perception on them changed. So I went into this conversation with this guy, and I completely blew him out of the fucking water in like three sentences, and then the dude rambled for like 45 minutes. I still hear about people talking about how I shouldn't have done that because we're on like two completely different social planes, okay? So anywho, because I absolutely fucking crushed this dude, he took the entire VOD, uploaded it to YouTube, and said that I was attacking him in the video. And meanwhile, the only reason why I brought him on was because he was getting so much hate for his opinion, I wanted to give him a bigger platform to express his point of view. Not understanding that Jinjinx and Tuner, more specifically Tuner in this case, weren't aware of Tectone in the first place, since they kept to themselves. The comment left is probably deleted, and the only evidence of his existence is within Jinjinx's quitting video itself. The part of the comment Tectone was probably upset about was, quote, Tuner invited a complete stranger into his workspace, who was known to be boisterous and had a proverbial gun pointed to his head." Unquote. Which likely is the reason Tectone stated that he was made out to look like the villain. Two different perspectives clashing. And instead they tried to paint me as a fucking villain, which was, oh, fantastic! It was great! And then on that day fourth I just said, oh, well if people are kicked down, fuck them, I just won't try to help! Tech the backlash Jinjinx and Tuner faced over Tectone's reaction got to Jinjinx, where he ended up taking a break from the channel and subsequently realizing that content creation on YouTube was both unsustainable and made him unhappy, which led to him quitting altogether. In the video of him quitting, he brings up the drama that happened. He thought that after that discussion was done, the drama was over, that was it. But somehow it managed to creep its way back in again a few months later. When we uploaded the VOD of that discussion to our YouTube channel, we also put out a comment that explained the situation that happened and gave context to the entire discussion. Well, Tectone apparently took that comment as us shit-talking him. In his eyes, our attempts to provide context and tell people exactly what the situation was and that he ambushed us was us throwing shade at him. Y'all y'all want to razz on me for that shit. Call me a crybaby. Yet after he posted that video, he put out like public comments about talking how I was a fucking bully to him. Like even on that video, it was even throwing shade while also using admittedly effective revisionist history manipulation tactics like saying things like he dismantled our argument in two minutes using in-game data and logic. Even when other content creators came on my channel, like when Jinjinx and Tuner came on my channel, bro, I fucking dismantled him in seconds, and he had to spend 40 minutes trying to justify his cause. Right? Y'all were there for that. I dismantled him in fucking seconds. I have able, been able to defend every single one of my opinions, beyond a shadow of doubt, using literally in-game data and logic. Which you can easily see is not what happened if you actually just went and watched the VOD of the actual discussion. However, he is the bigger content creator, so he can rewrite history as much as he wants and say whatever he wants. And he knows that his viewers aren't going to bother going back and actually looking at the VOD of this discussion and seeing that all of his claims are bullshit. And in a he said, he said situation, the bigger content creator always wins. Regardless of what people thought of it, Zhang Li got changed. It was around this time that Tectone talked with Dr. K, an interview I recommend everyone watch for themselves to gain a better understanding of where Tectone's mind was during this time frame. And it seemed everything went back to normal. <sighs> Until, of course... With no specific date on both of these accusations that stemmed into the drama, Tectone came under fire on Twitter, because a fucking course Twitter has a problem, and on his videos, specifically being a racist and or a pedophile. In regards to being a pedophile, without context, Tectone put Klee in a waifu tier list. Now, as for where this waifu tier list is, where he says the quote that Klee could be a waifu to another 12 year old, I can't find it, but the closest I have is this. Fan of blondes, next up, Kaching. I don't have one. 
Next up, we have Glee. Everybody's favorite daughter. Okay, look, I know what I said earlier. I know about the disclaimer, but unfortunately, look, she's too cute. If somebody else were to try to date my daughter, Clee, I would beat the fuck out of them. In case someone sees this list, oh God, I can't put her in D tier, I can't, it breaks my heart. I will put you in C tier. I can't, C for child, okay? C for child, Clee. This is fine, all right? She's having a great time. The video of it is most likely deleted, but there's plenty of evidence of him claiming he said it and making it out to be not a big deal. Clee may be 12 years old, but she could be a waifu. Being called a pedophile because I said Klee's a fucking waifu. God, it's so easy to clip shit out of context. It would be easy to take this at face value, but because I'm digging up everything with full context that I can find. Klee may be 12 years old, but she could be a waifu for another 12 year old person, okay? Oh yeah. Yeah, so apparently saying that uh, 12 year olds can have a crush on another 12 year old um, is pedophilic. Being called a pedophile because I said Klee's a fucking waifu to another 12 year old. Five months ago, no joke, I got canceled on Twitter and they took all of these clips from me out of context and I was called transphobic, homophobic, and a pedophile. And the reason why I was called a pedophile was because I was making this thing called a waifu tier list where there's this character in this game I called, her name's Klee. She's 12 years old and the statement I said was, was that Klee could be a waifu for another 12 year old. In the video where I thought he deleted it or whatever, I found this comment that quotes it. Being called a pedophile is a serious accusation. A very serious one. Career ending, possibly. And the fact that he was called a pedophile and clipped completely out of context is pretty fucked up. This was taken out of context in screenshots that lack the verbiage for its clarity, and clipped to make it seem as if he genuinely was a pedophile. Subsequently, Tectone, obviously, defends himself against serious accusations. And with no proof of the transgressions beyond a single clip or image without context, Tectone moves on. And then there's Yunjin. Tectone made an insensitive comment on the trailer of Yunjin, stating that she sounds like a fire truck whine during her O oh Maestro line that played. Like, it might be fine for a little bit, but then after a while, it's just gonna sound like a fucking fire truck. This sparked controversy over whether or not he hated Chinese people because of the single instance of singing happened to not be in his taste. Apparently, wait, a xenophobia? What is that? <laughs> what? Hey, sorry for um, thinking that a bit of a song is bad, which makes me, you know, racist. Additionally, in a video about the racial insensitivity, he explains himself and directly apologizes for the remarks being insensitive to the Chinese opera culture, not knowing how much it meant to them and how bad it was to say what he said. I would like to apologize for what I said about Yoon Jin's opera singer. I think you're correct. I think there's a big difference in not liking someone's singing when comparing it to disrespecting someone's culture. It's very hard for me to apologize when I had no ill intent to begin with, I think intentions are important. When I did say that, I hope nobody actually thought that I had an ill intentions to disrespect the Chinese culture whatsoever. Because for me, that was just a joke. But once I was told how important and shown why it was so important to the Chinese culture, if you've noticed, I never did that again. When I saw the song afterwards, as you can tell, it was met by highly praise, but People aren't going to clip that to show, oh, look at Techie redeeming himself. Everybody's gonna be there when you fall. Everybody's gonna be there for the accusation. And I hope my actions show that since being told how much that hurt people, I never did it again. Yet again, Tekton defends himself, and upon finishing the quest with Shenha and Yunjin, whereupon Yunjin sings about the journey of Shenha, Tekton gives it admirable praise. But, while all apologies come with doubters, there's never an end to when someone has to speak up about something. And something was said. The fifth installment to Battle Impact Dramatica happens when a close friend of Tectone, direct roommate Gooseg, created a video on another content creator, Asian Guy Streams. Or as he's more commonly known, Atsu. The drama began when Atsu subtweeted an action where one creates a vague statement that can relate to someone without directly mentioning them, about a content creator, 
saying the following. There's a lot of creators that come across as genuinely nice people on stream slash video, but are actually like parasites behind the scenes. Okay. If you don't bend to their will, they'll make a big deal out of it publicly or drag your name through the mud behind your back to other creators. Not a bad, not, not a bad overall thing to say. Who? Oh, why, why are we not naming who? Additionally, also saying. Then there was another tweet, okay, that said, there are many creators in the Genshin circle and wider connected circles I'd like to befriend or get to know better. But they're already in so deep with many people who are awful people off stream, and it makes me skeptical if they are just naive or also awful behind the scenes. Then there was a subtweet saying, I feel very bad when I can see someone is trying to make an effort, but I cannot get a clear judgment of their character, so I just keep them at an arm's length to avoid risk of getting mixed in with people who have ill intentions or just horrible to talk to behind the scenes. Such a vague blanket statement from a content creator that is directly supported by MiHoYo about the content creator space at large makes it very difficult for interpretation. However, while Gooseg only wanted to know who Atsu was talking about, it was relatively clear that Atsu genuinely did not like Tectone, especially after the interaction between Tectone and Viosity previously. Goose is just your little fucking minion. He's your yes man. Nobody gives a shit about Goose. He's, he's just the discount version of you. It's so ironic because Goose's whole career is just built off leeching off Tecto. And he's just there nodding. And it's like, is, are you not embarrassed for yourself? Are, are you just not embarrassed? How are you insulting someone else's numbers when yours is born from leeching off this guy? Accusing the duo of drama baiting and going so far as to blame them together with full confidence. There's been an issue with Tectone and Goose Egg where they keep drama baiting both the Genshin TikTok community, the Genshin Twitter community, and most importantly to me and closest to me, the Genshin content creator community by throwing a lot of bait tweets out there, by throwing a lot of shade on their streams or even in their video or VOD highlights. And it's just very frustrating and it's something that has not changed. In fact, it's probably regressed in terms of progression from the Enviosity and Tectone drama or all the way back since the Jin Jinx and Tuna versus Tectone drama since then the drama the chaos the toxicity it just keeps happening right in the middle of this direct messages between Atsu and Tectone were leaked much to Tectone's dismay within them there was a sensitive conversation about Tectone's past trauma Atsu essentially made the situation where Tectone's only defense was to bring them out and speak about them Atsu with nothing to lose in the situation doing the same has repeated itself over and over and over again we're here again in january and it hasn't gotten better it's regressed it's gotten even worse right i feel like he's gotten even worse and I, part of that reason is one goose who i believe is a yes man he's always there in person endorsing this behavior allowing him to get away goose calls me out for sub tweets doesn't say anything to tectone very hypocritical that's yes man behavior you have his chat again when Tectone tells lies, the example being the deleting DMs, they're all like, ha ha ha, caught him in 4K, without even thinking about it, without even challenging the reasoning or the logic. And that's yes man behavior. It's well, what I perceive is he feels like he's done nothing wrong and this will pass. But it didn't because we, we're here today in January. Stop feeding into drama and causing issues for other people. And that is what we want from this. Like, I'm not here to receive an apology. I'm not here to demand an apology. I'm not here to give forgiveness or receive forgiveness or even offer an apology because I stand by everything that I said. This drama went back and forth and even directly brought Tectone into it, the result of such an ordeal ending up with Goose Egg accidentally leaking Tectone's address and moving out. Not taking care of myself. I was also taking care of Goose, who used to live in that room. But then I realized I cannot take care of him because I am a broken human being. And a broken human being cannot take care of another broken human being, which caused both of our emotions to be absolutely horrible. So he moved out, and honestly, that's okay. I feel like that's the best decision for both of us. It is what it is. It is, what it is. Am I sad? Not even remotely. Because you can't be sad when you do what you know what's right for both of your mental health. I will leave one part out. I'm sure a lot of people can assume what happened for the bad thing but I'm gonna go ahead and go past that part. After Atsu made those claims about Goose, he could not live with the guilt. It made him start doing things that he regretted very quickly. One of those things was he leaked my address live on stream. It was an accident. This was during the point where 
I was underneath a lot of death threats. It was not good, and it scared the out of me. Maybe you can call me an ass over this. Maybe you understand where I'm coming from. I asked Goose, since he was the one who leaked my address and put me at a security risk, I asked him to help me pay for a security system. Unfortunately, his analytics were absolutely f***ed up due to Atsu completely ruining his career. Goose said he couldn't do that, he wouldn't do that, and we agreed to never talk to each other again. The stress overall make a goose step away from consistent content creation. With the moving out and shaky ground Tecton was on, it seemed shortly after this he was on the up and up, remaining drama free for what looked to be about a year. At least, nothing serious. But during that drama free year, someone made a video on Tecton, and while Tecton didn't care for this video, a year later he watched it again. Around this time, I heard of the drama through the Steak and Eggs podcast from Tectone's side. I'm streaming, and I get sent this guy's video uh, from over a year ago, and it was called uh, Genshin Court Tectone, the King oh, of Misinformation. Fuck, I didn't want to watch it on stream. I watched it off stream, and I was like, this is the most irritating video I've ever seen. So I react to the video on stream. Right. Uh, and it was still a pretty dumb video. I okay. uh, brought him on my stream. And uh, I'm not gonna lie, I, I daddy up on him a little bit. Uh, and then at the end of the thing, uh, he apologizes to me for okay. him making the video on me. Smart. And then me and him talk about anime. I invite him to come to my podcast. We hash things out, we're good. This was my first introduction to Tecton. The controversy started around May 30th, 2022, when Flip on YouTube created a video about Tecton being an unreliable source of information regarding Genshin Impact. Looking at Tecto now, he is of course a whale content creator already creating a disconnect between most players and him, as well as the fact that he seems to be anti-theorycrafting and anti-meta due to some things that happened in the past which you can do your own research on. Now that wouldn't honestly be a problem in isolation, but when you consider the fact that Tecton has started a street robunculous amount of misconception in the Genshin community because he doesn't preface or state that things are his opinion, coupled with the fact that he actively shits on meta and TC. That breeds a problem which we'll look at in the first piece of evidence. While there are some opinions and perspectives that would be worth criticizing on both Flip and Tectone, the infancy of the game and subsequently the budding creators within the game only knew as much as anyone else. Opinions were toted off as suggestions for other people or facts by many other content creators at the time, and as the game evolved with newer content that supplied characters with different teams and builds, so too did these opinions. Tecton has a clear will perspective and can pretty much shit out any team recommendation and use it because he just does that much more damage than the average player. Flip criticizes Tecton's takes on things like account reviews, teams with certain characters, Electro being bad for its time, and, for the most part, just meta-related issues. While the video has some contradictions to its own points, much like this. You actually don't- dude, that's what I'm saying, dude. I told you, you literally don't need artifacts on Venti. Uh, Excuse me? You need to relax with the clowning. Venti fulfills his main role of being able to suck up enemies with no artifacts, that is true. But saying you don't need artifacts on Venti at all is disingenuous. He can do his job without artifacts, but the massive fucking boost you get from building him is still worth it. This point was picked on by Tectone too. He can do his job without artifacts, but the no, massive boost you get from building him is still worth it. So what you're saying is... He can do his job without artifacts, So what you're saying is the exact thing that I just said? While the video was picking on takes that were obviously dated, or made sense in their time frame, or were satire altogether, the overall tone of the video was just to target Tectone for content ultimately. Tectone's response to the video was overall negative, as the video painted him as a serial misinformer, rather than just a content creator like many others that only knew the information they had at the time. Is this guy theory crafting my casual advice by meta standpoints? This is insane. The same day as his reaction to the video, Tectone left a comment saying it'd be cool if they could hop on stream together to discuss the topic, the topic being Flip's video. Much to Flip's dismay, in this debate, and I want to emphasize this isn't really a debate as much as it was just a disorganized discussion, Tectone absolutely dominated the conversation, picking on Flip's inability to articulate his points quickly. But when the back and forth was done and dusted, Tectone went so far as to cool the waters and invite Flip onto his podcast called GotchaCast. We're done. Well, that's boring. What happened after that? <laughs> So this other guy. <laughs> okay, thank God. Oh, thank God. This is the part of the video that got me interested into figuring out what the fuck was going on. This other guy. 
thinks he's like the Batman of okay. the Genshin community, right. and he's gonna say he's all gonna the things. He's gonna take you to task. Exactly. Yeah, he's gonna hold you accountable. Yep. He he came to defend defend Flip, uh-huh. a guy who didn't even want to be defended, <laughs> right? So typically, in the pattern of Tectone's dramas, there would be an issue, it would arise, it would reach a boiling point, it would simmer down, and then everyone would move on with their lives. This part, where somebody else intervened and it got worse, is what interested me. Enter stage left, soul of an artist. Soul created a video slamming Tectone on how he treated Flip, and going so far as to bring up Tectone's previous marriage, and then trying to use it as foresight as to how he may use it against him in the conversation. Damn, man, I'm starting to see why your wife divorced you. That's crazy. What's even crazier is I guarantee you that you're going to take that one comment I said about how your wife divorced you, and you're going to use that as the backbone of some argument about how I, I bullied you and said bad things about you, and you're just going to completely ignore everything else in the video. But I, I'm ready for that, because you're really good at doing that. Of course, this reached Tectone, and he reacted to it, and subsequently brought Soul on stream shortly after. Uh, you know, I'm doing pretty good, man. Cool. Uh, before this conversation begins, uh, do you consent to this call? Uh, that depends. What are we gonna talk about? The discussion harped on topics regarding how Tectone treated Flip, meta takes, and Tectone's overall behavior within the Genshin community. While the first half of this discussion is like two friends bullshitting with one another, it started to dissolve with Tectone no longer taking Soul seriously in the slightest, and Soul realizing it much later. Additionally, the famous clip. No, Tectone. It's because you made a minor, or, or, or former minor. Oh, that's everybody, Wait, a huh? former minor? <laughs> yeah, oh my, my god, wait! You hey, made, you, you understand you, that I'm a former minor too, right? I myself am a former minor. Even though they could both goof off on the slip-up, uh, Flip was not a minor when he was on stream, but he made this video when he was 17, which is the point that he was trying to argue, and additionally, Asmongold even says that this is what he was trying to say. I think what he's trying to say is you're trying to hold him accountable for something that he did whenever he was a kid. Yes. Like, that's the implication. Yes. But because he's bad at communicating, he looks like an idiot. Yeah. But Tectone didn't forget about the point where he brought up his ex-wife. You've been talking about Meta for, what, 30 minutes to an hour? It's not going anywhere. I think I'm done. All right. Do you think Do you think my wife should have left me? Yes. <laughs> no, no, not really. Um, I think I think that uh, there's a reason why people do the things they do. Mm -hmm. And uh, Texan, my friend, you have a lot of reasons. So, do you think Do you think that's what happened? Um, no. Uh, what, I don't know. What do you What do you Do you think Do you think my wife left me because I didn't play Meta and Genshin Impact? When did I even remotely imply that? Well, I'm just asking. Despite Sol abruptly leaving after the fact, it was stated on a video and apparently Twitter that they ended up resolving the problem. Even though Sol barged out on a bad note, you would think this should be the end. Two guys disagreeing and one barging out because they can't stand the other. No, nothing that simple. Sol's brother, Exco Solo, ended up making a video too. His video basically said the conversation should have ended sooner and on a good note, and being Soul's brother, basically shit talk Soul from a perspective of living with a guy for 20 years. Oh my god, I've never had a drama where somebody else's family member felt the need to have my back over yeah, their brothers. That's bad. It was insane. But maybe this is a little bit more serious than I might have said. I've never had somebody else's family member weigh in on the drama, uh, so I guess let's just figure out what's going on. With Solo making some good points on Tectone, including how obnoxious he can be. Talk about. The only thing Sam. I can say is that Tectone, as an entertainer, does not know when to shut up, but at least he's- Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I feel like that's fair criticism. Tectone was rather positive about the video and ultimately had this to say. I think it's very good. Very good job. You know, is what it is. Hey, full disclosure, I still have full respect for both of them, right? Because I understand that sometimes people make mistakes, and I'm not going to hold that against them. Exco Solo ended up going on stream with Tectone and just having a rather civil discussion about the whole ordeal and blowing smoke on what essentially was just a dead fire, basically adding to the aftermath, but not stoking any flame. So, how does this get worse? Why, a mental breakdown. To your Twitch chat telling me I'm unprofessional for talking about this on the internet? All of you, beat my fucking ass. He made the video first, you dumb fucker. I know. Painfully silent. I want to preface this with 
this drama is far past and far over, and even though the people involved are still hostile towards one another, it doesn't mean that anybody should go and harass any party. The situation ended up getting under Soul's skin, and he ended up reacting in a rather brash way. Tectone, of course, ended up making a video about the whole situation, as the whole situation was already public. No, I'm not going to take this guy seriously, because he doesn't deserve to be taken seriously. But guess what, Soul? I'll talk to you serious now. Now, as much detail as one can extrapolate from a stream where there is no face cam, Tectone heard about the situation and gave his input, taking it from a deep-rooted place of emotional trauma that he had growing up. And he assumed beyond a shadow of a doubt that Soul was an abuser of his brother. This interaction, the assumptions, accusations, and blatant hatred boiled for well past a month. Prior child or not, it's pretty clear to see that neither party really enjoyed this. And plenty of people have their opinion, but the outcome will always be this. But at least, this should be the worst of it. Right? Mr. Pokey made a very easy to follow video on the depths of the drama, and Box2 created a decent summary. If you want deeper details on the whole gangbang, go check out their videos. But we still gotta ask what the fuck happened. Some say it was the great ratioing of 2023 that caused Genshin cuck packing celibites to spurg out about the rewards being shit. Others, the duality of man tweet, dropped by certified soy boy, Zyox himself. Others, the slap to the nuts known as the Three Wishes debacle. But really, none of those could have happened. None of it changes the actual start of the drama, being Braxophone himself, posting a document spanning the length of a Five Nights at Freddy's fanfic. In this document, Brax calls out another creator that is preferred by Hoyoverse, a familiar face to all of us already, Atsu. Atsu was accused of several things, such as foiling a sponsorship Brax was offered. But I had this opportunity and I had no idea what to do. And I felt like the only person that might that I might know that also has a similar opportunity would be him. Uh, yes, because when he DM'd me about that contract stuff, yeah. I was intrigued. Can you elaborate on that? on the intro I just I was just I was just curious about what it was about and so you at so what you're implying here is that after Brax messaged you asking about advice for this contract then yeah. you messaged somebody at Hoyoverse I messaged someone at Hoyoverse yeah and and what did you ask them oh what 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 is this about what's it about okay excluding him from speaking with others within the content creation circle, putting Brax in a catch-22 where he can't speak out or his point is proven, telling others that Brax doesn't vibe with him. You know, the horticulture we grew out of when we left high school. Except, Atsu brought it with him. Circumstantial evidence that the community at large widely considered true, or to a lesser degree, fucked if true. Now, what does this have to do with Tectone? Well, Atsu fucked up Tectone's life earlier, causing a ton of personal issues that spanned to affect years of his life. Time, relationships, friends, prospects, all of them he will never recover, all because Atsu involved himself. During this drama, Tectone sides heavily with Brax, noticing a lot of parallels between his issues with Atsu and Brax's accusations against him. While the entirety of this drama could be summarized as just high school click drama, ultimately, if you just boil this shit down to its core, it's one content creator having bad feelings about another, and either inadvertently or deliberately souring their reputation among other content creators within the gotcha space. Upwards of 69 pages were made for this. 14 from Brax, the other 55 from Atsu. Vilification by association is dangerous, and nobody has the whole idea and are just left with pure assumptions on everyone's character which, of itself, is dangerous. Assuming, of course, you understand that. Tectone was deeply affected by everything over the past three years, but the information is scattered among dozens of videos. This is not the conclusion. There's a lot of information I left out deliberately, as you might have either noticed or figured. From the beginning to the end, I'm going to reveal every single outcome, show every single conclusion in all seven of these chapters. So, without further ado, the end game. As of recently, a lot of information came to light from multiple people, and a story can be pieced together to find the truth. So, we start with Tectone's first drama, Dreamy. A while ago, Dreamy accused in the most recent fuck, that Dreamy never even knew what gaslighting meant, and it caused a lot of issues for Tectone due to ignorance. Whether or not this story still holds with the current bullshit is for you to decide. Right before the drama on Twitter hit, Dreamy was fucking exposed by Mr. Pokey for posting cringe in general outright shit-talking every creator near them, and enviously whining about not getting their fair share of views on YouTube. Their solution to being called out on their bullshit? A community post that a fraction of the people will see, from stating falsehoods out of ignorance to toting them as facts. 
to bringing spotlighted as envious, two-faced egotist of a content creator within the gotcha space. And in a separate community post, they apologize to Vulcan YouTube and Gotcha Smack for their toxic behavior. 2. Enviosity Enviosity, as we know already, is a free-to-play Genshin Impact content creator and holds this title with pride, getting angry when people add premium currency to their account as it diminishes his legitimacy. Okay, dude. What the fuck? You're kidding me! People can just give others a Vulcan off of the fucking Coda shop now? This is a strand of the woven fabric of shit that Envy has put out there, but we're going to focus exclusively on the interactions between Envy and Tectone. In the most recent explosion of drama where everyone had to get their word out, Envy was no exception, with a 12 tweet long Twitter post highlighting their PTSD with Tectone, a term that is considered grave to those who actually have it. Envy does not. Enviosity attempts to levy their outburst on stream being caused by Tectone, when the outburst was not even caused by Tectone in the first place. Some fucking idiots on Twitter. Some actual dumbasses on Twitter. And I scroll down and I see this one motherfucker who's following me, so I'm a little disappointed. And they're like, Envy, how long are you going to remain as the only content creator not addressing the Genshin situation? Question mark. You know what's even more disappointing? We got other people who are still following me, Minimin, says, I don't think he will. He actively stays out of any negativity, coward or what, that's for everyone to think. Me kind of disappointed though. So it's not one guy being a dumbass, it's two being a dumbass. Copy pasta aside. I should be the only motherfucker getting praise in the Genshin community because I don't spend money on Genshin Impact. This is but a fraction of how Envy treats anyone he views as inferior to him. A question from someone who follows him about current events. It wasn't even harmful. It was merely a question, and Envy berates, belittles, and demonizes the one person who asked the question and the other who replied. Envy's supposed emotional trauma was weaponized and directed at Tectone, going so far as to bring up his previous marriage as a reason for how Envy was being treated. This was the massive point of contention, as Envy went from making it about Tectone to his love life. This post, garnering a massive viewing and even being ridiculed on stream by Tectone, brought nothing but shame to Envy and granted Tectone the reason to respond with his own post. 3. Jinjinx the Tuner Jinjinx the Tuner drama, the only one I could definitely say that Tectone went off the rails on. I looked deep enough and talked to the right people about it. The only thing I can definitely say for certain is I know he apologized to Tuner. Right, like yeah. Sometimes he's in the right. Sometimes he's in the wrong. Like um, like when I wasn't there for the Jin Jinx and Tuna drama. Yeah, but apparently he was in the wrong for that. You know, I I, I wasn't I wasn't there for that. But apparently he was in the wrong for that. Oh, I wasn't there, but apparently he was wrong. I mean, I didn't see nothing, but that's what I read online. And so apparently, even though Tekton was actually there trying to help Jin Jinx and Tuna, and they took it poorly, all. So that was him trying to cause an issue. It definitely wasn't just Jin Zinx and Tuna releasing the worst Zhang Li video on earth. So I gave uh, Tuna a platform to defend his video. And because the reception to that wasn't good, then they said that I planned to make them look like idiots. Like, come on, bro. Like, come. I mean, the VOD's there. Like, you can go watch the VOD. It's literally been there. We're just making shit up for fun. <sighs> Well, here we fucking go. So this video, uploaded April 9th, 2024, three years after the events between Tuner and Tectone, was brought up by Tao and Bimao in a video Tectone reacted to. In it, at 2 hours and 40 minutes in, Tectone ends up stating basically the same shit he did years ago, despite being, quote, good with Tuner, unquote. I am good with Tuner! We talked on stream and hashed it out! Now, this is a problem, as everything he stated is in fact an outright lie. Not gonna beat around the bush, but he states that we should go watch the VOD. I'm gonna comb the VOD in question, and I will show you exactly what happened without too much abridging, so I can make this clear. Tectone stated several years ago that he- bro, Like when Jin Jinx and Tuner came on my channel, bro, I fucking dismantled him in seconds, and he had to spend 40 minutes trying to justify his cause. I have able, been able to defend every single one of my opinions, 
beyond a shadow of doubt using literally in-game data and logic. Tectone, in fact, did not. He simply asked questions regarding both Jin Jinx's and Tuner's thought process about why they thought Zhongli was underpowered. And the first question Tectone asked... All right, cool. So yesterday I was on my stream. People keep on fucking coming into me and linking me y'all's video. <laughs> and I just wanted them to leave me alone. Uh, um, well, we always... We, we're actually putting together a video right now, but we have said several times, definitely don't go into other people's stream and harass them or... You know, everybody has their own truth as far as how characters are played. Um, you've got, obviously, a lot of investment. You've got a lot of money. And you play the game that you want to play. Um, you know, but it's like your way of playing is not everybody else's way of playing. We don't, uh, oh. we don't, we don't criticize people for playing how they want to play. What we try to do with our videos is say, all right, from a free-to-play perspective, say you only have limited amount of resources. You're not going to, you know, have this giant pool of things that you can just buy a character get them level 99 you've got a perfect bolide set for him you got a perfect you know dps set for him or like you got a perfect shield set for him or whatever with all these great artifacts we're trying yep. to show people what a realistic setup is okay you're gonna get him to a4 you know maybe maybe you'll get him up to 70 80 you know maybe if it's a carry uh you got a semi-decent half piece maybe set up you know you but you still need to farm so you know you're spending a week to get him up to a4 you're spending another week to get his uh his um artifacts up you know so it's not a perfect set and uh this is what this character is going to do for your average player yep. especially when you consider yep. most people who are free to play who have played since day one maybe are getting to world level six about now as you can clearly see, there was no dismantling of any argument in seconds. Tuner clearly explains how their video process works and is meant for the casual player of Genshin. There is no blurred line here. The rest of the video, which is only 33 minutes long, goes on like this. There is zero hostility, and Tuner hints that Tectone's chat is being sort of toxic. And also, I, I hope you're not getting the, like, the consensus or the feeling whatsoever that I'm here just being like, Oh, I'm gonna bring this fucker on stream and I'm gonna shit on him. No, I'm, uh, not, doing I'm that. not getting Literally, the impression from to... you, but I will tell you that the chat definitely is getting that impression. Oh, okay. Well, tell the chat to shut the fuck up. <laughs> uh, some some hey, people chat, from hey, your Twitch chat, Twitch some people chat. from your chat have come in and say this is really cringe, but. Hey, hey yo, uh, chat. If you're over on his stream, make sure to press follow on his stream and show support for Turner. <laughs> All right. This right here, this entire video is Tectone inserting himself and derailing a stream to get his word in, which is bad enough, but the cordial conversation and the conclusion of it seemed purely informative and constructive for both of them, even with Tectone gifting him five subs by the end of it, and stating, I ain't no bitch, in a positive manner for how he went in and came out. I really want to say, yeah, sorry, hold yeah. on, I really want to say, uh, assuming you're listening right now, um, I really do appreciate what? that you took the time to want to talk instead of, of just talk shit. Of course. Um, it really know, means bitch. a lot to me to know that yeah. there are other content creators and other people who care to have a conversation instead of just sit behind their computer screens yeah, and sit behind their walls yeah. and just sling Thank shit. You, Afterwards, it was proven that Tectone had malicious intentions initially when he came onto Tuner's stream. This is a guy that Tuner did not even know before the interaction. Dude came into my stream. He apologized, uh, he said, you know, what he did was 100% ill intent. But because of this video, because of this reaction Tectone had, it's clear the air is still fogged. What he said is false in its entirety. They uploaded the video, provided context, Tectone read it and believed he was being villainized for it and reacted harshly. Tectone's audience, as stated earlier, spread hate on JJ and T for how Tectone interpreted the pinned comment left by Jin Jinx giving people context on the video. When we uploaded the VOD of that discussion to our YouTube channel, we also put out a comment that explained the situation that happened and gave context to the entire discussion. I don't believe for a minute that Jin Jinx or Tuner or either of them had any ill intent. This is the one situation, the one time I can say for certain that Tectone overstepped, and it seems he still believes it. And his words essentially nullify the apology he gave to Tuner in the first place. I believe the only course of action here is to publicly apologize to both the Jin Jinx and Tuner, much like the Yunjin video, and not speak on it again. These were two informative players only seeking to provide a before-you-buy 
to their audience. They never intended on insulting anyone, let alone Tectone. 4. Tectone's Racism and Pedophile Accusations If you didn't notice anywhere else in this video about these accusations coming up again, it might be easy to infer that Tectone is in fact neither racist nor pedophilic. They were baseless accusations on him from people who just hated Tectone, and wanted a reason to see him fall. Of course, Tectone is no ordinary egg you can just crack. 5. Soul of an Artist The drama between Tectone, Flip, Soul, and Solo it's a bit of a doozy, but let me just say the biggest winner is Flip. The fucker got publicity, took the L gracefully, and is cordial with Tectone and even collabed with Soul. Too faced or too smart, you decide. I just applaud the guy. Tectone was oppressive in his talk with Flip, that's no lie, but whatever. It's over opinions and suggestions in the game's infancy. Soul, I was understanding to his desire to defend Flip. There's nobody saying you couldn't. However, you probably should have brought points that actually mattered and tried to simmer the conversation down more, since it was ultimately not so serious to begin with anyway. Flip actually did not want to be defended, but I know he appreciated you doing it, and you're within your right to make whatever you wish on anyone you want, but you should know that people will disagree with your opinions on others. Atsu, number 6 and 7. Atsu steps between Envy and Tectone. This outcome left Tectone believing he was always the problem, and even being pushed into therapy for it. But then we come to find out that he apparently didn't even need the therapy, and that someone, quote, manipulated him into it, unquote. The man even tricked me into thinking that I needed therapy, that I had to do live on stream. Very uncomfortable. Now, that being said, that being said, Dr. K and I are now quite close. And you know what Dr. K thinks? He thinks I never needed that therapy to begin with, and that I was tricked by a very conniving individual. Not a good image to have, being a manipulator. But after everything you accused of Tectone and his friends, now the consequences of your overstepping shows after admitting you didn't really know anything about the two. Let me just correct myself there. Yep. Sorry, I'm not sure that makes it better. Got but it. you and Goose Egg publicly went after me. I, I'm, I'm sorry, apologies. Sorry if I said you manipulated Goose Egg. I should have just said you and Goose Egg just went after me. Does that make things better? No. What in the f are you talking about? You said that I manipulated Goose Egg into making a video about you. You're confusing the timeline. What the f are you on about? Does, does that make things better? Now, Goose Egg specifically made a video on me. All right? Yeah, no shit. I he made a video on me. Atu, Atu, do you really not understand the repercussions of coming between him and I when we're in the same house and causing conflict between people in the same house? That's like me going after your wife, and I've never brought her up a single time, and I never will. What you did is unforgivable, man, because how do you think that affected him and I? When you say, oh, you're controlling him, and then he knew that he caused me bad PR forever. How do you think that that made him feel when he went against my wishes, when it was just about him and you, and you made it about me controlling him? Do you know how disgusting that is? And truth be told, I thought you encouraged him to do so. I w and imagine that, you fucking retard! Three years, you fucking admit it! And that's the fucking problem! Three years! After everything, after all this bullshit, things come to a great close. A good ending. And that ending finally reached Tectone after years of vilification. Some things are coming together to finally heal. I just got a DM from Goose. I haven't heard from him for two years. I've been seeing everything going on and I've been respecting you and your career for a while. I just want to say I'm glad you came out and said that on stream and I have zero issues with, ha with you now and honestly I'd also love to talk things out as I do think I could have handled things better, and honestly, my mental health was absolutely destroyed due to Atsu bombarding me.
I know we won't have what we ever did, but I still do value as a piece of my life. When everything blows over right now, let's have a talk. But there's one last key to this drama that I have to point out. One very big factor that I left to the very end. You see, everyone knows Tectone. Everyone knows Atsu, Brax, or any other content creator. But the real culprit of everything, the real reason for everything going the way it did, is you, you fucker. Why the fuck do you feel the need to go out of your way to attack other people just because your favorite content creator disagrees with them? Holy fucking shit, you guys are like messed up chimps in a fucking zoo. I can't fucking believe how many goddamn comments I've had to read that said, go kill yourself, X person, or you should be fucking hanged or lynched. Like, oh my fucking god. Stop fucking attacking other people just because your content creator disagrees with them. My god, you're all so fucking retarded. So, there's a uh, one more drama I gotta bring up. It's about uh, Tectone being on stream and jerking off or some shit. Um, this is a thing like he does. It's an extreme example. And he fucking loves extreme examples. The, uh... ...going on where a bunch of, like girls were popping onto Twitch streams and just basically advertising their uh, other sites that they could sell their product, which was just their bodies and stuff, and it just kind of became this huge mess. And, uh, yeah, if you just kind of piece those things together, it's, it's just a nothing burger, honestly. Like, it's not that big of a deal. And, uh, I don't think that it's fair to call him, like, a pervert or a pedophile in that regard, just because, like, I mean... What are you gonna do in that regard? He's just putting an extreme example up. And yeah, he could have talked about it, but whatever. Um, this video was supposed to uh, come out and a bunch of other projects right after it, but something else came up and I had to uh, push it forward. So uh, the next video I'm going to be making is another long video and it's gonna be on Elden Ring. Now, in regards to both long form videos and this kind of video, uh, one, I'll do videos however the hell I want to, because that's just what I do. Two, the, uh, content in this video is not a thing I'm going to be doing probably ever again, because it was quite literally just a thing that was in my head and I had to get it out. So it only made sense to just, like, put it in a video and put it in a format where people could follow it and reference back to Tectone's past history since I had a lot of people that I tried asking and all I got back was just look at your look it up yourself, look it up yourself, look it up yourself. So I got I got frustrated and figured fuck it, let's just make one condensed location where it can be given out and you can see it. Um, if you want other people's opinions on tech tones and like behavior and shit, you've got people like Stiorg, uh, like Hex Juice and all these other content creators that I'm showing on this little wherever the hell I put it. But, um, yeah. Uh, I guess until next time, you'll either see me or you won't. <laughs>